Hey there viewers, Deli here, and welcome to a rainy morning at St. Zeno's Lake, and welcome to Ultimate Fishing Stories. Today we are going to be fishing for some carp using bread and peas on a number four hook, and we are going to be telling another story from probably about ten years ago or so that is kind of funny, kind of embarrassing, and also kind of a bummer. Now, it's funny in hindsight, because everything's funnier in hindsight. We are also listening to the All Games radio station built into Ultimate Fishing Simulator. So, get ready to hear some sick video game music while I tell you my story. First off, Ultimate Fishing Stories is kind of still an unofficial title. It just kind of is a mix of what the game is and what I'm trying to do. But it's an attempt to create a more friendly camaraderie between me and my viewers and so we are going to be telling a stupid story while this giant carp bites onto my hook <sighs> so Ohio Ohio is where I'm from and Ohio is known for not a whole lot at all because it sucks here but one of the few things that Ohio is known for is its amusement parks now one of the number one amusement parks in the world potentially considered by some is Cedar Point. A few years ago, Cedar Point bought another park that is located in Ohio called Kings Island, and they purchased that park from Paramount. Now, Paramount, as you know, is a movie studio or like a production company, and so a lot of the rides used to be named after movies and television shows, and so they had a Scooby-Doo ride there, and that plays a role later just give you a little backstory so you understand what's going on now this occurred probably about 10 years ago something along those lines it was late high school age I was probably 16 17 maybe maybe even younger I, I'm not sure but um the whole point here is I went to Kings Island and I'm I was still a minor and so I I love roller coasters, it's as simple as that, I've always loved roller coasters, and I got invited to go with my then girlfriend at the time to go to Kings Island with her and her youth group. Now I I wasn't particularly religious at the time, and neither was she, but you know, she went to church because it was what her family wanted, and she went to Kings Island because, well, why wouldn't a kid want to go to Kings Island? And so we go to Kings Island and it was a pretty nice day it was overall a nice day and um it was slated to rain and sure enough it started raining so we got out of the rain for a little while went and sat in like a shop or whatever and then because idle hands or whatever we let our teenage hormones get the better of us and we instantly decided, okay, we need to find somewhere to go where we can have some alone time. Now, as you can probably guess, there aren't a whole lot of places to do that in an amusement park. And since we came with her youth group, we didn't drive ourselves. We couldn't go to the car or anything like that. And so we had to get creative. And the scooby-doo ride was an indoor ride and it was very dark in there it was like this you know you hunt for ghosts sort of spooky thing and uh, you know being the opportunist we are well in we go so we're waiting in line for this and we're already fired up you know we're standing way closer to each other than we need to be and you know grinding up on each other shit like that stupid high school romance crap <laughs> and uh so we uh, hop onto the Scooby-Doo ride and start cruising around and one hand of mine is on the gun and then my other hand is off on her parts. Now, l let me be clear. Nothing went on like below the clothes. This was all over the clothes stuff and it was just like fondling, feeling up type stuff. And I think we might have made out a little. And you know, it, we aren't stupid. We we knew that we were on a ride that was going to end soon, and we had a limited time. <laughs> and so, so it wasn't the type of things that anything would come of. It was like, well, 
literally. Yeah, like, you get what I mean. <sighs> Chrono Trigger. One of the best soundtracks of all time, maybe. And so we we just went about our business, and I still got a pretty good score on shooting the ghost, if I do say so myself. So obviously I wasn't very good at the other task I was performing. But uh, we get to the end, and we're we're sort of sitting there waiting, and you know they're letting people load off of the ride. <sighs> of course I'm not gonna be able to catch any fish. Where the fuck are you guys? Oh, there's some monsters over here. And so they're loading people off the ride and we're just sitting there and like 10 minutes pass and we're just sitting there waiting and they won't let us off the fucking ride. And we start to get skeptical. We start to get concerned because this is a little sketchy, you know, and but, you know, we stay positive and before you know it, they pull us forward and they let us off the ride right into the waiting arms of two security guards who lead us back to the security checkpoint. We knew we were fucked. We, we, they didn't say a word to us regarding why, but we knew. We knew we were fucked. And so we get back there and they tell us, so like, so we've got cameras in every single one of these cars and placed all around the ride. We saw what you guys were doing, which wasn't even that bad and no one else could see us. It was a two person car. I don't really see the problem with it in the first place, but they were, they were pretty insistent that we were in the wrong. So. They tell us, they're like, listen, we're going to call your parents, give us your phone numbers, and we're going to do this. And I'm begging them. I'm, like, pleading with them, like, do not call her parents. You can call my mom all you want. Go right ahead. But do not call her parents because her parents already didn't like me very much for no real reason. And I, they just don't, they weren't cool parents. They would have a horrible reaction. And so I told them, I was like, listen, man, you can feel free to call my mom, but you're going to regret it. And she's going to be very, very pissed at you, not at me. And he thought I was a fucking idiot. So <laughs> this guy goes and he calls my mom and comes walking back into this room with like his, his fucking face was like flushed. He was pale. And <laughs> I just looked at him and I was like, she wasn't very happy, was she? And he was like, no, no, she wasn't. And I was like, and she wasn't not happy at me, right? She w she didn't give a shit about what I had done. He was like, nope, not at all. And see, my mom is super cool. She is one of the coolest people in the world, really. And she, when she's gonna get a call from someone who's like, hello, ma'am, uh, we have your son, that, or, you know, when she gets a call that's like, hi, yes, this is security at Kings Island. It's about your son. She's going to shit her pants and think that I'm dead immediately. She's gonna, going to go into concerned mother mode. And that's exactly what happened. She got super pissed and was like, I don't care what he's doing with his girlfriend. They're teenagers. I don't give a shit. And tells the security guard off and he just felt like an idiot naturally and came back and told me, he was like, yeah, she doesn't really care what we do with you. She, she says that we should just let you go have fun and that it wasn't a big deal. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what I told you she would say. <laughs> But that's not really what the story's about. But shout out to Mama Deli because she's awesome. And so her her parents obviously didn't take to this as kindly. They weren't nearly as excited about the fact that her their daughter was getting felt up slash feeling someone up on a Scooby-Doo ride with their youth group. So they tell us, listen, you're banned for a year. You cannot come back to Kings Island for a year, which is absurd in my mind we're, we're teenagers who were just in a private setting almost not even doing anything all that racy but now it's been 10 years I, I don't really have a right to try and argue my point and so they tell us like hey you uh, you gotta leave now too like you can't be in the park because you're banned and we can't do that because we rode down with her youth group and so after establishing that they were like well I guess you have to stay with your youth leader all day then. And so yet another embarrassing element to add on top of this, my girlfriend is bawling, crying at the thought of telling her youth leader that we were fondling each other on the Scooby-Doo ride. So he comes and gets us and we have to stick with him for the rest of the day. And she's just a mess. And I'm like, I'm just kind of shell shocked, I guess. I didn't really know what to think or what to do. Really wish I could get a bite. Holy crap. 
And, uh, and that's not what I meant to do, but that might work. <laughs> uh, they look a little bigger further out. Let's guess a little further. And so our youth leader is honestly pretty fucking chill. And he's like, listen, I was your age once. I can't even count how many times I got caught doing crap like that that I shouldn't have done or did things in places I shouldn't have done. He's like, it's not a big deal. Like, yeah, it's embarrassing right now, but it's, it's no biggie. And that was pretty awesome. That was pretty cool of him, considering his position and the type of... Well, you know, the type of message he should be sending. And I thought that was, that was pretty chill of him to sort of give us reassurance that, listen, it's not a big deal. Chill out. So, push forward a little bit, and her parents absolutely were, they were relentless on us after that, and, like, eventually ended up leading to our implosion. We ended up breaking up a while after that because we just, we couldn't function because of it. It was impossible to have a relationship, so that ended up probably, probably being the end, or, like, the beginning of the end of our relationship. It was just a total mess after that. Which was a bummer. It, it was kind of a bummer because, you know, her parents just didn't understand. They didn't get it. They thought we were heathens for being horny teenagers, you know. So yeah, I got banned from King's Island for a year and I've been back since. Uh, but I have not ridden the Scooby-Doo ride since. It was also pretty funny because my band director gave me the nickname Scooby Snacks because I told him this story and he thought it was pure gold. He thought it was hilarious and ended up giving me the nickname Scooby Snacks. Slash would always just tell me that I was going to get Scooby Snacks whenever he knew I was hanging out with my girlfriend at the time. So that's my story. Well, dear viewers, we uh, we didn't have a great fishing time today. We didn't catch a whole lot, which sometimes comes with the territory when you go fishing. You're just not always going to be getting the bites. Still got my story out. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to kick your feet up and stick around for the next fishing story. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.